first off, I saw if you go, is it a little bit like Destiny's in your own hands? If you, if you can get those three wins, you, you do get up into the, into the top four, hopefully and give yourself the best chance to come finals? Uh, well, we've always been about our process uh, all the way through this and um, and making sure that we control what's in front of us. And, and, and that's obviously uh, on and off the field for us as well. And this week it'll be about St Kilda and um, and it'll be about you know how we how we go about that. Um, we feel like we're in a in a reasonable position, um, but we need to make sure that we we still deal with what's in front of us. And um, and the Saints this week is really important, and we'll be we'll be doing that. We've just operated this whole time on uh, on making sure we can control what's in front of us, and that's what we'll do again this week. The win on the weekend not only did it seem to be a great test of the guys' ability to get over the line when things are tight, but was it also a good chance, although there are no crowds, to play on the G, obviously pretty important come September? Oh, we enjoyed playing the MCG, absolutely we did. It, um, it was great, it was certainly a bit different uh, being pretty quiet, but um, it was great to play out there, we, we really enjoyed that, that part of it. Um, we felt our start was a little bit a um, bit slow, but we felt we got going when we needed to, and um, and that's been really important part of our process all the way through. Has been you know, when we've been able to, you know, when we're not playing that well to get going and and, and show an ability to be able to fight back and, and push through that. There's been quite a few games this year where you've probably fallen three or four goals behind early on. Obviously, it's something you probably prefer to avoid. But what is it about this group that seems to be able to really kick into gear when they are down? Yeah, look, we'd, we'd like to get off. A, a bit earlier than you know, get out of the blocks a bit earlier. We, the last time we played St Kilda, we got out of the blocks quite well, so we'd like to be able to do that again if we can. But um, you also have to understand that there's an opposition there. They they generally, you know, they're playing pretty fierce foot, football as well. So um, you've still got to understand there's going to be different momentum swings in games as well, and and to be able to fight back when the momentum's not going our way has been a been a real credit to the players. John, a lot has been made, obviously, of your great record against some of the top sides, but you have dropped some games to some of those sides outside the eight. Do you have to guard against that sort of complacency? Um, oh, I just think it's about playing whoever it is in front of us and playing quite well. I mean, we did it, did it last week. Um, you, know, we, uh, you know, we played Fremantle, we played Essendon uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, St Kilda this week, it's... Um, you know, I understand that you know there's there's been a bit going on, and so we've I think we've got a pretty good ability to be able to get through it and and concentrate on what's in what's in front of us. Is there a bit of extra energy around the, the guys today with the, the families not too far away from rejoining everyone? Yeah, it's you know that's been a yeah you know, it's been a, a six week um, period apart from families, and uh, that's on top of the nine weeks last year as well, and no one had families with them last year, so um, and, and six weeks again this year, so. It, you know, everyone's looking forward to that. Not everyone's got their families coming down, but um, you know, our families have been in hotel quarantine up in Brisbane for a couple of weeks, no sunlight, no fresh air. So they're looking forward to getting a bit of sunlight and fresh air, which would be great. And obviously looking forward to catching up with loved ones. It's, a, you know, it's been, a, been an extended period. What about you personally, John? That to see your family again, it's been a long period and it's a stressful job, I mean, I bet you can't wait. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm, I'm like everyone else. It's, um, you know, we, we were away for a long time last year with our family. It's, in, it's an important part of everyone's life, isn't it? Is family, and um, and when you when you don't get the opportunity to see them, um, you miss them. And and so this year, uh, is, I'm I'm no different than anyone else. I'm a bit lucky. I've got uh, teenage kids, so at least they sleep okay, and uh, they've been able to keep themselves occupied through schooling over the last couple of weeks in hotel quarantine. So. It's a little bit more challenging when you've got toddlers, and uh, a couple of the a couple of guys have got toddlers running around. They're full on energy wise. So uh, in hotel quarantine, it's been pretty tough. So I'm sure the the partners are really looking forward to getting out and having them run around on an oval and just expending a bit of energy outside of their own rooms. It's been more difficult this year emotionally, given that I mean last year, you, the year you were in for a set number of weeks, whereas this year a lot of it's been up in the air. What much set to where you're going to be. In Oh, this year there seemed, you know, the last year we, we went through, there was certainly a lot of uncertainty last year and a lot of the unknowns. This year, um, we know what we're dealing with us to a certain degree, but the, the challenges have come uh, hard and fast. Like just before a game, you lose, you lose a, some pretty important players and staff members. The day of a game, you, you get transferred. You realise the game's postponed, you get transferred to another state. Um, obviously the families with the hotel quarantines changed a few times as well. So there's been a number of those things coming along the, the journey. And I think both us and, and GWS, to their credit, have, um, have handled it really well. Um, you know, GWS are playing this week off a five day break uh, down in Geelong. And uh, you know, so they've, 
they've been outstanding as well as be able to deal with all the challenges that have, that's been thrown at the you know the two New South Wales clubs in particular. What do you make of our Cons game on the weekend? First game out of uh, quarantine, 33 touches and a goal. Who's, who's that, sorry? Uh, Callum Mills. Oh, yep. Yeah, what do you make of his game on the weekend? 33 touches and a goal, couldn't have asked for much more on his return. Yeah, look, he's a he's a quality player. He's in our leadership group. He's um, kept himself pretty busy and occupied during the quarantine period and and um, made sure that he was in the, in the best possible nick he could be and came back out and he and Harry Cunningham uh, spent the spent the time away, then they came back into the group. It was good to have them back. They give some more energy to the group and we've been able to find little bits and pieces of the, along the way to provide the, the group with real energy. And uh, that's been an important part of it. And ironically, those two coming back in last week was good to give the boys a lift. And, um, and you know, that's been a, a big part of it. And Cullen's season as a whole, now he's playing mid- midfield. It's been quite, quite amazing to see him just move into his team. Yeah, look, you know, we uh, we knew he could play any part on the ground. I mean, he's a quality player. He's a very good halfback as well. Um, and we knew he could play midfield. We've we've been looking at our uh, our defence and and having players get that you know the back seven together over a period of time. We've made a couple of subtle changes there over the last three or four weeks as well. Blakey and McInerney and those guys have been back there, so we feel like we're still developing and learning and growing as a team. And you know, that's been an exciting part of. What we've been through as well, we're seeing the development of, of players in different positions and we'll continue to do that over the next few weeks. It's an important part of, of where, we, where we're going as a footy team. Given how, given how Blakey uh, moved into the half-back line and has really taken it with both hands, are you tempted to move any other player that might be a bit out of form into the half-back line? Uh, it's not so much just doing it for, for out of form, it's just about what the team needs at any particular point in time. We feel like we've got some flexibility in our team now. Uh, whether that's midfield, back, forward, uh, we'll continue to do what we need to do and I think we've, we've added that flexibility over the last six to eight weeks. Has being on the road and the disruptions around the season placed any extra pressure on, yes, on contract negotiations and that sort of thing, like with Parker and Jordan Dawson there, a couple of names out of contract? Oh, I've just, that, I think that's part of that's part of what every club goes through. So um, whether you're on the road or not, that's just you're always going to have players out of contract, and you deal with it as we see fit. You call someone like Luke though. Like it's late in the year, he's having another fantastic year. He's been here a long time. It just seems odd that he hasn't. Re-signed. Oh, there's been a bit going on. <laughs> I'm sure you can understand that. I understand it, but others yeah. have re-signed though, like in that time. So yeah, no. I mean, we we'll work through that. I mean. I think you you will understand that I traditionally don't contract on contract negotiations. So I, this is another example of it that gets worked away in the background, and um, I leave that to others. And you know, we'll focus on the Saints. As, as a gen reality, though, is there a reality that, given the amount of talent you have on the list, and I suppose the young talent coming through, that you are inevitably going to lose players? You can't always hold on to players that you like to, and that's just part of the landscape. I think all clubs are faced with that, though. I mean, that's the that's the landscape of, of all clubs. But you know, we're we're in a position that. Um, to be able to be challenging the finals at the moment, and you know, we think we've got a, a good, strong young team coming through. We think we've got a good uh, sprinkling of really experienced players that have been driving the group and driving the standards, and that's what our focus is. Um, everything else tends to be looked after, it can create some outside chatter, but internally, that's what we're focused on. Six-day break this week. Do you attempt to get It's been a bit more challenging when you look at the, we don't know where the draw is and so if you're trying to plan out his, his program what it looks like uh, last week we were, um, when we went um, we obviously appealed to get him off and then we're thinking we're playing in Brisbane on the on the Saturday and then you find out on the Saturday that you're actually flying to Melbourne and and so it's been a, um, another layer to try and plan out his his program but so far he's been feeling really well and, and he's really keen to keen to, to play so yeah, part of it's the sports science part of it's the, the medical part of it's the, the gut feel and part of it's talking to Lance and how he's feeling and uh, so far touch wood he's been feeling pretty good and um, and that's an important part of it as well. Ideally, would, you, would, you, would you want to give him a week off before the finals or, or is that by leading into the finals <coughs> going to be sufficient for him to... Uh, yeah I guess it's uh, the, 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 ch- the challenge we've got is that there's so many unknowns that we'd, we'd, we're dealing with and, and so you sort of sit back and you'd like to have a bit of a plan but the reality is the plan doesn't last too long. It's sort of, it sort of gets thrown out the window after 
five minutes you've made the plan, you've spent two hours talking about it and then it gets thrown out the window. So there's been a fair bit of that going on. Um, so we've sort of just reverted back to how, we, how we're going week by week, how he's feeling week by week. Um, and relying upon his feedback and what he's able to do in the gym and on the training track about how he feels. And so far that's been working okay. And um, you know, we're, we're conscious of a 34 year old playing a, playing a bit of footy and we're also conscious that he's, he's the best um, to understand his own body. And um, if we feel like he needs a rest, regardless of when that is, he'll rest. Um, you know, we're, not, we're not just pushing on blindly. Um, but so far he's been giving us feedback that his body's been feeling pretty good. How do you look back at his season now? I mean, you go back to the start of the year and we were talking about he might not play every week. Who knows where he's going to be at? He's had some injury interruptions now. He's had 40 plus goals mm. and he's played most games. Yeah, he's, um, he, he's a, we, we said at the start of the year as well that his ability to be able to train is so important, whether that's in the gym or, or during the week, uh, to be able to train and get some training under his belt. Is, is critical to him being able to, to put some games together. Um, so far he's been able to do that and, and that's an important part. If, if that was interrupted in any which way, shape or form, he'd be not playing. We'd give him a week off to get back into a training routine. So um, that's a large part of what he's been able to do. Uh, we're monitoring it as closely as we, as we can possibly do it. Um, once again, if there's any sort of sign that we think he needs a week off, he won't play. And, um, uh, as important it is for us to, to have him out in the ground, uh, you know, we're not going to we're not going to push him to the point that um, you know we, we, we don't think we need to risk him that way. So, but so far he's been going pretty well. And John, you're in a position to host the final uh, at some stage during the final series. Do you have a preference? Would you like to be Kenny Park? Uh, just keep on saying it. I'm focusing on the Saints this week. <laughs> I know you're pushing about the three or four weeks time, but uh, I'll keep on throwing <laughs> more, guys. this week. This week holds uh, important significance being the Pride game. How have you seen the progression of the Pride game since it was first um, played in 2015? And just, you've got the Pride Guernsey for the first time there. So just the progression of visual representation and where you think the Pride game will uh, sort of progress to in possibly being a full round. Uh, yeah, we've been, um, we feel really privileged to be a part of Part of the Pride game, uh, it's th it's a very important part to be able to be inclusive for all people that want to come along and watch the footy and be part of our club. Um, we feel very honoured to be a part of this game. Um, we think it's an important uh, statement from from our club, and and it's important for us to support uh, the Pride game and and all that it means. And uh, we constantly get a number of messages um, from people that really appreciate. How much it means to them and you know that's an important part our players are really pleased to be able to do that and um, if it helps in some small way we're um, you know we're very privileged to be a part of this game